Hi everyone, this is our channel, Meet the Real Story. Please, like, share and subscribe. I adore detective adventures and solving puzzles that others can't. I'm crazy about this. I love challenges and mysteries. I'm Ramon. But my father's nickname for me is Megamind. I'm 14 years old, and I'm typically ranked number one in my class every year. I have become famous for solving riddles. Many comers have tried to unseat me, but all have failed. I love to examine minute details. But let me get on with telling you my story. One hot summer, we had just finished our exams at school and were going on summer break. So I organized a trip to the beach with my friends. Beach weather is amazing. Clear skies, cool ocean breezes, sand, and sun. Just amazing. One day, before my beach trip, my mother handed me a letter from my grandmother. I was surprised and thought it was a little weird because Granny owned a hotel in the surrounding area nearby. It had wonderful views all around it. I had opened the letter, which read, Dear Ramon, How are you? I hope you're enjoying your summer break. Would you mind spending a couple of days with me? I have a serious matter that I would like to discuss with you. Granny. Initially, I thought that it was probably some silly matter, but then my inner voice told me that it might be important. I was conflicted between going on my beach trip or visiting my granny. I decided to visit granny first. She was family after all. So off I went. Though my grandmother lived in a beautiful area, the closer I got to the hotel, the more my inner voice was nagging me. When I arrived at the hotel, Granny was waiting for me. She smiled and hugged me. I had missed her so much. She had company. Raul, her maintenance man, and Malika, her housekeeper and assistant. There weren't any guests in the hotel at the time, and I asked her why. Her face changed, and she said that was what she wanted to speak to me about. So we went to her room to talk. She then proceeded to tell me that the hotel was haunted. Haunted? I exclaimed. What makes you think that? Granny said, The hotel has evil spirits that frighten the guests at night. I didn't want to believe it, but I knew Granny was a rational person. I suspected there was more to this than meets the eye, so I decided to investigate this intriguing mystery. On my first night at the hotel, I waited until midnight. Then I lit a candle and walked through the halls of the hotel. There were photos on the wall and I could hear whispering and the rustle of the leaves outside. It was a little spooky and unsettling and made my blood run cold. Suddenly, I heard laughing on both sides of the hotel and a shadow passed quickly in front of my eyes. Unnerved, I quickly returned to my room where soon afterwards I heard something scratching on my door. I kept thinking to myself, I am not afraid. I am not afraid. Then the door began opening slowly. I saw a hand on the doorknob. Then the owner of the hand came into view. It was a cloaked, headless man holding a candle. I fainted. The next day, I woke up to find Granny and Malika standing beside me. Granny told me that I had been sleeping a long time. I asked what had happened and they told me they heard me scream and came to my aid. When they found me, I was unconscious on the floor. At that moment, there was a knock on the door. It was Raul bringing me a drink. That was when I noticed something strange about Raul's face. It was emotionless. Then I glanced at his hands as I accepted the drink from him. That night, I again walked around the hotel. I found some steps at the end of a corridor that led to the basement. Down in the basement, I opened a maintenance door and found a tape recorder and a pile of clothes on a table. Suddenly the lights went out. I was groping around in the dark and trying to find my way back when I heard the laughing again. Still, I continued stumbling ahead through the dark. I stepped on an electrical line and tore it off the wall. I returned to my room. My door opened slowly. I was hiding behind the door. I grabbed the loose electrical detonator and touched it to the doorknob. It was live, and I heard a grunt from the owner of the hand on the other side of the door as he or she was shocked, and I heard him or her fall to the floor. It took me a while to find the electrical panel, but I managed to get the lights back on. When I did, 
I found Raoul laying unconscious on the floor next to the doorknob that I had electrified. I called Granny and Malika down to the basement. Granny asked what had happened. I replied, Granny, you really need to screen your employees better. Raoul was your ghost. Granny looked shocked and asked me what made me think that. I explained that the hand on my drink today was the same hand I saw on the headless ghost that opened my hotel room door the night before. I also found tools, a tape recorder, and some ghost clothes down here in the basement. In addition, I found the earphones that had been placed around the hotel. Granny was shocked. Raul woke up about that time, and she grilled Raul. Why are you scaring all my guests away, Raul? He said, This hotel used to belong to my family, but you bought it from my grandfather. Well, I wanted it back. Please forgive me. Malika said, We have to call the police. But I said, No, wait. I have an idea. Let's renovate and reopen the hotel with a new name. The Haunted Hotel. Our advertising slogan will be, Spend a night in a haunted hotel. Raul can do his ghost thing with the whispers and the laughing. Why, he can even flicker the lights off and on at a random time once or twice a night just to give the hotel a spooky atmosphere. The idea proved to be a big hit. The haunted hotel attracted many tourists and Granny's business prospered. I had a nice holiday and still managed to fit in my trip to the beach on my summer break. Hi, I am Ralph. I am 19 years old. I have simple secret that I like my mother. Don't judge me, just listen to my story. I had a quiet family, kind mother and loving father. We had stable lives in our far state. But as you know, there is no place for happy life in our world. There was the turning point in life, and it came quickly with me. It was a nice day in our garden, me, my mother, and my father. My father was sitting under a tree reading a book. Me and my mother were playing football. Suddenly, mom overshot and the ball went into the street. I was too young to think, I just ran quickly to pick the ball. There was a fast car. The driver was screaming at me, stay away, but I did not. My mother sacrificed herself to rescue me. I fainted and when I woke up, I saw my mother's blood everywhere. My father was crying. There were a lot of people. Our lives changed to be gloomy. He was surrounding me by many looks. I thought he blamed me because of her death. He was so sad. I left my friends. I did not talk with people. I was just eight years old. I was thinking of killing myself. I would like to escape from this blame. Suddenly, my father decided to marry. I shocked because I could not imagine any other woman instead of my mother at home. He said in a firm voice, she will be at home soon. He asked me to be a good boy. I entered my room and started crying. I could not imagine. But I decided to annoy her. When she prepared food, I immediately threw it. Her only reaction was a kind smile. While my father was staying at home, I insisted by bothering her by doing a lot of noisy things. My father was shouting, and she always protected me. I said to myself, maybe she is a good woman, and she loves me. One time, while she was cooking, she had a phone call from the hospital. It was an urgent matter. I was watching TV. She came in to me and said, Ralph, my sister is in the hospital and I have to go. Can you take care of cooking? I did not care. She smiled and went out. I went to the kitchen and turned up the heat to burn the food. But the fire did not just burn the food, it started to burn home too. There was fire everywhere. I could not breathe. Then I fainted. I woke up, but I did not know where am I. I looked around and saw my stepmother sleeping. She looked exhausted, and there was cinder on her face. Suddenly, the door opened, and I discovered that I was in the hospital. The nurse said, Get well soon. I asked her what happened. She told me that there was a big fire at our home, and my mother is a brave woman. She entered home and rescued me in the last moment. I looked at her. I discovered that she is a great woman. She woke up suddenly and asked me, Are you okay? I hugged her and cried. 
I said, Sorry for everything. She said, It is okay. I can understand. I considered her my mother. I started to help her in everything at home. She helped me a lot. I supported her a lot until her last illness. Today, I'm standing in her gravesite. I want to tell her that I love her a lot. Most people I saw hated and cursed at me, and some treated me more kindly and gently than usual. It was very confusing, to be honest. I didn't know the reason for people's animosity towards me, but I thought perhaps it had something to do with my mother. Before telling my story, let me introduce myself. My name is Maria. I lived in a poor neighborhood fraught with drugs and death. People who lived there were mostly losers growing up. People have always looked at me with disdain, for no good reason. People ostracized me. I had no friends, no one to speak to. When I would return home, I'd ask my mother why people didn't like me. She wouldn't answer. She'd just cry and smile sadly. She would often tell me to ignore people's looks. But how can I ignore the looks of everyone around me? It was the biggest mystery in my life. I didn't know if my father was alive or not. The only thing I knew about my father was how he looked from a picture on our wall. And if I asked about him, my mother would only tell me that he traveled and he never came back, that she didn't know anything about him, almost as if he were dead. But I suspected that she wasn't telling me the whole truth, and I thought people in our neighborhood knew something I didn't. Perhaps that was the reason they hated me so much. Aside from this problem, I was a clever girl at school. I dreamed of having a good position in life to make my mother proud of me. One day, as I was returning home from school, I felt that someone was following me. I turned around once, but saw no one. The second time I turned around, I saw a man. He was wearing a mask. I was afraid, and I ran home to my mother. She was worried, and she just hugged me. It happened a lot after that. It seemed like everywhere I went, that man just happened to be there. I spent a lot of time thinking about it, who that man could be. Eventually, I graduated and got a job with a well-known company. We left our poor neighborhood and rented a flat in a good area. I had almost forgotten about the mystery man, who used to follow me often. Then, one day, a poor man came into my office. He handed me an envelope. Smiling, he told me to say hello to Isabella, then disappeared, leaving me with even more questions. Who was he, and how did he know my mother? I returned home, told her about this man, and showed her the envelope. She looked worried, and asked me to quickly open it for her. When I did, I found something unexpected. One old photo of him, and a recent one. I didn't know it then, but that man was my father, and all I did was walk away. I curiously began reading the letter. It said, Dear Maria, I am sorry for everything. Sorry for the suffering I caused you and your mother. Sorry for not being there with you as you grew up. I hope that you can both forgive me. Please tell Isabella that I never forgot about her, or you. I love you two so much. I looked at my mother. She was holding the photographs and crying quietly. So the mystery man who had often followed me home had actually been my father, watching me from afar. I asked my mother, Why did you hide the truth from me? Why didn't you tell me where my father was all these years? She replied, I was afraid to shock you with the news that your father was in prison for killing someone. And I gasped, Killing someone? 